Well, good afternoon. Thank you all for coming in this afternoon. I know you're uh, looking forward to getting started on your pregame exercises as well as uh, holiday celebrations. So I'm going to keep this as short as possible. I wanted to take a moment uh, to wish all Vermonters a very happy and safe Thanksgiving day and weekend. I hope everyone has the opportunity to spend this time with family and friends, to recharge, and of course, to kick off another Vermont winter. The ski areas, areas have opened up, many cross-country skiing uh, centers as well. Uh, beginning Friday, uh, Killington will host the World Cup Tour, which will be a great event for Vermont in its, uh, I believe, third year. It also looks as though uh, it's going to be a, a great snowmobile season. Uh, it's the, probably the best start in a number of years, and it's also uh, the last weekend of deer season, at least for rifle season. And to top it all off, uh, this also marks uh, the start of the holiday season. Uh, and uh, as well, uh, I hope many get out to support our great Vermont businesses. Uh, at a time uh, when the nation feels so divided, let's consider using this time of year to reflect on our shared values and what brings us together. I know Vermont can lead the way in restoring our sense of unity and there's no better time to start than Thanksgiving when we give thanks to all the good in our lives. Kicking off of the Salvation Army Kettle Campaign this morning was a reminder uh, to think more about helping and supporting our neighbors. This sense of community and responsibility to each other is an important part of what makes Vermont so special. I know we can carry that spirit throughout the year as well. As a reminder, um, it will be cold this week, starting tomorrow. So if you or someone else you know uh, needs heat, heat or shelter, please call 211. Our team at AHS is ready to help. And of course, let's stay safe on the roadways and uh, drive responsibly as we celebrate the holiday. And finally, as we celebrate this, uh, one of our oldest traditions, I want to thank the men and women who serve or have served our country. Those who can't be with their families uh, today or tomorrow, including our Vermont National Guard members that, who are currently deployed. Again, I hope Vermonters have a very happy Thanksgiving, uh, that we look out for each other and remember those in need and those who are serving away from their families today. And so with that, I'll be happy to open up for questions. What are you thankful for, not necessarily as governor, but just as folks got? Well, I, I'm, I'm, of course, thankful for my family, uh, the great support of my friends, um, and uh, the world we live in here in Vermont. We're, it's a special place. We're very insulated, I think, from some of uh, what I see across the country uh, that's happening today and across the world. So. Um, we should reflect on that and, and think about how special this place is. It's been to me uh, some place that I've uh, spent my entire life thus far. And, uh, and I believe that, uh, again, we can make even better. And, I, and I'm just, you know, for the, for the respect I believe uh, that Vermonters have and the core values that we experience, I think it just makes us a, a little bit different. And I'm, I'm very uh, appreciative of that. Uh, Massachusetts is open to retail marijuana shop uh, 25 or 30 miles from. Be careful on your drive today, by the way, Stuart. It's <laughs> snowing out. Oh, man, I walked into that. Uh, does it, <laughs> does it uh, make you, uh, does it change your calculus about uh, <clears throat> having something so close uh, to the inevitability of uh, Vermont following suit. Is Vermont going to be the next state? Well, again, you know, we've we've debated this, uh, discussed this over the last couple of years, and it's no surprise. We knew that uh, Massachusetts had had voted uh, rep by referendum uh, to go to a tax and regulate system. We know that Maine isn't far behind. We know that uh, Canada uh, has uh, voted to legalize as well, and Quebec uh, sharing a border with Quebec is going to be uh, something that's sur surrounding us in some respects. We, uh, we moved forward with a uh, decriminalization bill last year, uh, voted to legalize up to an ounce, grow in your, in your home. So this, uh, this next step, uh, again, isn't a surprise. Uh, uh, what would be a surprise to me is if there wasn't a bill uh, to move forward with this uh, in the next year or so. Um, my, my feelings stay the same. I'm not saying never, uh, but I want to be sure 
that we uh, we have a way to, to, to deter and uh, as well uh, to detect impairment on our highways. I think that's important, and it's not just for marijuana, but for alcohol as well as a, a combination of drugs and marijuana. So. I think we have to uh, step up our game in that respect. So I look forward to having uh, that debate, as well as prevention uh, in our, our for our kids, uh, ed more education for for our students, uh, and uh, we need a marketing campaign in that respect. So we'll uh, I'm sure that we'll be having that debate uh, in this next session, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll put forth a number of initiatives if that comes to be. Uh, about where we go from here. I'm still looking forward to hearing from uh, the seeing the report uh, that has been uh, draft form has been uh, distributed, I guess, uh, for, for some. I haven't seen it yet, but uh, mid-December, I believe that I will have the final report and then we'll go from there. So uh, what will you do if the legislature sends you a bill this spring? Well, we'll be working together, I, I would hope, along the way uh, to be sure that some of the areas that, uh, that I feel are important are, are covered, and uh, that we'll just have to see how the process goes. Is there any way to move forward uh, without a roadside testing mechanism? I, I just, again, I, I've said this over the last couple of years, I just don't know what the hurry is. We have all the opportunity in the world to make sure that we, we get this right. And so if we all agree that uh, public safety is important, impairment on our highways, I believe uh, it's uh, the vast majority would, would uh, recognize that. Then why don't we do that either simultaneous uh, to the, the passage or before the passage. So uh, I'm going to continue to make uh, my argument uh, in terms of why we should do this either concurrently or before. If Vermont, it's, go ahead. I wonder, do you worry about the safety of marijuana that Vermonters are legally consuming now, given that it's not regulated? Yeah. yeah you know, again, this isn't just about marijuana. Uh, it's, it's about the combination of all different uh, types. You could be, as I've said before, uh, in Colorado, I believe, uh, and I, I don't know if it's five nanograms or whatever it is, uh, detection of THC. Uh, you could be under five. Uh, you could be under uh, the legal limit for alcohol, and you could be taking uh, uh, prescribe prescription drugs and be impaired. And I think that's the point. We need to, to, to make sure that we're moving forward in, in areas where we can detect impairment. Uh, what that means, I'm not quite sure, but at the same time, having uh, some sort of uh, testing, I think makes a lot of sense, uh, considering everything uh, that we've seen on our on our roadways and learn from other states as well. Again, I, I'm sure that they're, they're experiencing this and uh, what we can learn from them to make sure that we we do the, the set this up uh, so we do so appropriately. If Vermonters who use cannabis um, decide they'd like to go down to Massachusetts to make sure they're getting something that's regulated and tested, do you have a problem with that? Well, again, you know, I mean, in some respects, we decriminalize up to an ounce. Um, it's it's there, uh, and uh, if they choose to drive to Massachusetts, that's uh, that's up to them. But do you have any real problem with that sort of activity going on? Uh, philosophically, no. So there's been a conversation about how you'll be forced to change your uh, your approach a little bit with the given the new house dynamic um, that you might be willing to compromise on bills that you previously vetoed. Is this one of those bills, or is this something that you've got? You know, you, you can't pro proceed with tax regulation until there's a technology which does not now exist. I would hope that there's, you know, this is obviously uh, it changes the landscape. Uh, it's a it's a different uh, it's a different situation than it was two years ago. Uh, but I would hope that we can make our argument, work together uh, in order to to be sure that uh, Vermonters are safe. And, and I and I believe that we can make that legitimate argu argument. So. Uh, I, I, Again, I've, I've worked in the minority uh, throughout my entire uh, political life. Uh, this is no different, and uh, you, uh, you accomplish, uh, you can accomplish a lot when you reach across the aisle, but it takes, uh, it takes some, some reaching on both sides. Uh, but I believe that we can come to agreement, whatever it is the subject is. Uh, but, uh, but I feel strongly uh, that we need to, to make sure that we're protecting our citizens. It's the highest priority of, of any government. Worth vetoing? 
Well, we'll see again. I, I'm, not, I'm not going to use the veto threat. It has uh, less effect at this point. Uh, but, uh, but again, I feel strongly about this, and, and, I, and I hope that we can come to agreement. I, I believe that the others uh, as well uh, would agree uh, that we need to, to make sure that Vermonters are safe and that those coming to Vermont, not just Vermonters, but those coming to our state are safe as well. So uh, I think we have an obligation to, to make sure that we get this right. You closed out the last legislative session uh, with a bit of a fight with lawmakers over education spending. Will you have a specific pro proposal to reduce the rate of growth in education spending in your budget proposal in January? It will continue uh, to have measures where I think uh, investing in education in different ways, changing uh, the, way we, the way we look at uh, education uh, to make sure that we're focusing on kids. Uh, you can expect to see uh, some of that. And we'll look for savings as well. Will, the, will those proposals be as far-reaching or as bold as the first two attempts? Uh, well, I, I would say that uh, it probably won't be as bold uh, because uh, we saw how uh, how that worked out. Uh, but uh, but again, I, I believe that we all have um, we have to face the challenges here in Vermont. They haven't gone away. Uh, you know, we have a, a demographic that's changing. Uh, we have a shortage of workers in the workforce. Uh, we have fewer kids in, in our school systems, and we have uh, increased costs in education uh, and across the board. So, and this unfunded uh, pension uh, liability that we're, we faced, uh, we've been facing for uh, you know 10 years uh, that we recognize. So, having said all that, I believe uh, that it's in all our best interests uh, to look for any opportunities to give a better education uh, at a at a uh, more uh, price that we can afford. Uh, Commissioner Gresham talked last week about the, uh, the pension obligations plus debt service totaling about $40 million and projected revenue, at least from uh, July for 2020 fiscal year, was about $32, 33000000 million. So there's already sort of a, a gap there. Um, how will your budget reflect those? Realities. Yeah. Are you going to have to make cuts elsewhere? Uh, we are going to have to live within our means. Uh, once again, I, I believe that Vermonters uh, elected me, uh, and with that in mind, that they have appreciated uh, the approach that we've taken in terms of, of what they keep in their in their pockets, and not raising uh, you know raising taxes uh, should be the last resort. And uh, so we'll continue uh, to present a budget uh, that does just that, uh, that doesn't spend more than we're taking in uh, and reflects the values that we have. So, uh, yeah, I mean, it's going to be, it's going to be difficult. Uh, we're going to, even if we have a surplus, which it looks as though we, we may have a surplus, that will probably go towards this increased amount of uh, unfunded uh, liability that we, we are on a path, uh, we have an obligation to, to keep paying down. Now that the election's over, uh, when are you going to reveal your clean water plan? Well, you know, again, uh, it's it's not a, a clean water plan. It's the it's the way that we fund it. Uh, that, I think that that got mixed up in the message, and maybe that's uh, partially my fault. Uh, but uh, but we've always we've always had a plan for clean water. We're we're moving forward with that. We have a number of uh, capital projects that are being. Uh, utilized at this point, and, and we're spending uh, about seventy million dollars over these last uh, these two years in doing so. It's the funding mechanism that that makes up uh, that amount of, uh, let's say, fifteen million or so uh, that we need to come up with an ongoing source. Um, so, again, you'll see that in the uh, in the budget proposal uh, when uh, in January. The, uh, the president's. Council of Economic Advisors issued a report this week um, about unemployment, job growth, that sort of thing. It noted that Vermont does very well with its unemployment rate, but we're dead last in terms of jobs created. Um, do those two numbers make sense to you, and what's the plan here to, uh, uh, to address that last place finish in job growth? Yeah, it's un unfortunate that we're 50th uh, out of 50 uh, in that respect. Uh, but I think it's uh, indicative of the situation we're in, and it goes back to our shortage of, of the workforce and demographics and everything that I've been talking about. And I believe uh, the, the legislature and others are, are, are understanding that more and more uh, every day. Uh, 
what's unfortunate is we're, we're, we have jobs available here in Vermont right now, hundreds of jobs, uh, uh, at least a couple thousand openings right now. We don't have the workers to fill them. And, uh, and it's difficult when you, you think about job growth, uh, it's difficult to, uh, to have conversations with companies uh, to, to encourage them to expand, which many of them are, by the way. Uh, UTC uh, Aerospace and, and Virgenz is an example of, of, of one who they want to expand by 150 uh, jobs right now. Um, but it's tough to convince them to expand when you don't have the labor force. And that's why uh, everything that we've been doing, uh, trying to encourage more families to move to Vermont, uh, trying to, to lure, lure more people in, showing uh, what we do so well, uh, that we're a great place to, to live, work, and play. So uh, we'll continue. Uh, you'll see some proposals to continue to do that. We've seen some, I think, positive, um, positive growth in that area. Um, but, uh, but again, what we're, what we're looking at when you see some of the major employers in the state have had some significant uh, downgrades in, in jobs, we've made up in, in some respects in some of the smaller areas uh, as well. So it's not, it's, it's, it looks bad, um, but from, from my standpoint, uh, I look more at how many jobs are available uh, and uh, the opportunities that surround that. When, when you hear companies approach you about wanting to come to Vermont, what types of companies are they? Uh, what's, what's the top sort of sector that's interested? In you know, it's, it's interesting. When I, I went on uh, the trip uh, last week uh, to Quebec, and uh, on the first trade mission since I think it was 2003 by a, by a governor. Uh, and uh, we talked with one company that will become more visible uh, in the next uh, month or so, I would say, uh, that is going to be coming to Vermont. <laughs> and uh, that one is a, uh, is a manufacturing company. Uh, so we've seen some areas uh, from specifically from Canada uh, that uh, have we've we've had landed I think three three companies thus far, uh, this will be the the fourth, but they're manufacturing, uh, and so manufacturing isn't dead here, uh, and I think that there's uh, we we have a uh, uh, a great uh, in in some respects a, a really talented workforce in that area, uh, and I, and I believe that uh, there's some room for growth there, but also in the tech industry, the food industry, and so forth. Is that ISON or something else? The one you're, that's about to come? That one is coming. So that's the fourth. ISON is the fourth. Right. ISON is the fourth. This would be a new one. Yeah. A different one than that. So this is one that we don't know about. Right. Okay. So in this next term, can you give a couple of, couple of examples on how you'll address that sort of workforce shortage? Um, I know you had several proposals in the first term. What Anything new you could point to that you'll try or try to convince lawmakers of? We may uh, go back uh, in trying to encourage the Think Vermont Home uh, campaign because I still think that's viable. I mean, look at look at the success we had in some respects. I mean, just from a, uh, the, the no notoriety uh, of the remote worker program, uh, the ten thousand dollar incentive uh, that uh, that isn't even implemented at this point. Uh, but we had, uh, I think, 2,500 inquiries about that program alone. So there's an interest in coming to Vermont. I think we just have to find uh, different, unique ways uh, to do that. Uh, the state-to-state -stay weekends uh, have, been, have been effective, uh, small in nature, uh, but effective. We'll continue to find different ways, uh, different approaches uh, to doing that. And, uh, and this, uh, again, uh, the remote worker program was something the legislature uh, came up with. So they have some ideas as well. If we can all, again, identify the problem, and, and we have that goal of attracting more families, more people uh, to Vermont, if we all can accept that and, and, and have a, a, a vision, uh, and I believe that we can change the, tra the trajectory here in Vermont, but we're going to have to work together in order to do so. Are you concerned at all about how the uh, the GMP uh, race uh, rate case has has planned out here? And um, if so, are, are you thinking of, of looking into what's going on there? Well, I'm not sure exactly what you're referring to, but there's a, the rate case that's in the uh, in the before the PUC at this yeah. point, right? Um, and we uh, <clears throat> no, we are 
uh, I had spoken uh, to our commissioner, I believe last week, um, and I, we are going to uh, uh, to take maybe a different approach there uh, and uh, make sure that we're we're uh, doing what we we're supposed to do in the public uh, public uh, service uh, department to make sure that we're working for ratepayers of Vermont. Uh, that's what the, that's their mission, uh, and uh, so there'll be some pushback in that regard. But we'll make our case with a PUC. And what, what would that look like? That new uh, a new approach. Well, it's it's just that we we may litigate uh, at this point, uh, and so that's uh, that's what the commissioner wants to do, and um, we'll move forward with that. Uh, how do you feel about the uh, the Nina news? I think it's great news. I mean, I heard about it uh, uh, last week, um, but uh, but we were um, obviously wanted to be didn't want to, to to say anything before it became evident that it was going to happen and it looks as though it's it's going to happen we're looking forward to working with this new new organization this new company uh, in order to preserve the jobs and it looks like in fact uh, that there may be more jobs attached to that which would be great news uh, for that region in particular uh, will we be looking to make any staffing or administration changes heading into your second term well, I'm going to be meeting uh, with all the, uh, the, the cabinet members uh, over the next month or so uh, to see if there's any, uh, you know, I haven't asked them if they want to continue either, uh, to be fair. So we'll have those conversations. Uh, I don't uh, expect any, any drastic changes. So you're happy with the team you've got? Yeah, I've got a very talented, uh, talented team, and I'm very grateful for everything they've done over the last two years. Uh, we're we're more seasoned now uh, than ever, and uh, and I believe that uh, again when you look back two years ago uh, to where we were then to where we are today, uh, we are light years ahead. So, but but all because of them and their talent. Um, just one clarification on the GMP story uh, that essentially paints Commissioner Tierney in cahoots with Mary Powell, and uh, that there's really no one. Uh, Defending the ratepayers' interest now. Do you believe that anonymous letter that circulated? No, I. I, I talked to Commissioner. Yeah. That? Yes, I, I spoke with her actually yesterday about that. Uh, no, I have. I have no reason to believe that whatsoever. Uh, in in fact, it, it might be just the opposite. It's unfortunate that this anonymous letter uh, came out, uh, and that uh, again, anonymous is the key word here. Uh, and, and I believe that the, in many respects it's unfounded. Uh, so I have complete faith uh, in the integrity of my commissioner and, uh, and we'll continue to do what we've been doing is watching out for uh, the Vermont ratepayers. Uh, the Department of Motor Vehicles was, uh, was named in a lawsuit by ACLU uh, recently um, in that they worked with immigration and customs enforcement officers to target migrant uh, farmers here in Vermont. Um, specifically for their activism work with uh, migrant justice. Uh, is, this, is this something that uh, you're concerned about? Well, always a concern, uh, but, uh, but I believe that we've been working uh, together. Uh, we uh, we uh, came to an agreement uh, with the ACLU and others uh, uh, earlier, and we, I believe we're following through on that. Some of these cases uh, that are referenced are, are uh, before, um, before the agreement. And uh, so we'll, uh, we'll look into it. Obviously, we're taking this seriously. Uh, we want to treat everyone fairly, and, uh, and we'll continue to do so. If I remember correctly, the, the law that you signed allows, it doesn't require uh, cooperation with federal. S79. But right? it allows individual state employees to share if they want to. Is that correct? I, I, I wouldn't want to get as specific uh, as that, but I don't believe so. Okay. Um, so it is, are they allowed in any way to provide information to the federal government? Or well, there's always, there's always, um, we, there are opportunities uh, to share information in many different ways uh, with uh, the federal government, uh, not just in, in regards to this situation. So. Uh, sometimes it's it's in conflict and it's difficult uh, to define. So I, I'm not sure uh, in this particular case uh, whether it has any merit. I don't believe so, uh, but we'll look into that. Are you are you aware of 
any instances since F-79 was signed uh, in which information has improperly flowed from state to federal authorities? I, I have, I, no, I have no reason to believe that it has. But again, we'll look into the merits uh, of the case and uh, be sure that we're following the letter of the law. We, we want to make sure that people feel safe here. I mean, we, we were fairly clear, I thought, in F-79. And uh, that's my feelings as well. We don't want to be the uh, enforcement arm of the government. Uh, we we want to make sure that we protect Vermonters. And uh, sort of on the flip side, are you aware of any pressure by the federal government on state entities to provide information? Oh, I'm sure there is. Uh, uh, you know, I don't know specifically, but uh, but I'm sure that there's been pressure. So, if uh, would you have any problem with a guy who worked for the DMV? call up ICE and say, hey, there's an illegal at 123 Main Street apartment. Yeah, I'd have a problem with that. You don't want them to do that. Right. Um, what is your favorite part of the Thanksgiving meal, and do you cook any of it? <laughs> what are you cooking? <laughs> Uh, the favorite part for me, uh, obviously, I, I think is is turkey uh, because it, you know you, it's the gift that keeps on giving uh, for the next week, uh, and I like leftovers, so I'm uh, I'm I'm good uh, with whatever is cooked at Thanksgiving. Did you shoot a turkey this year? No, I did not. Uh, did you try no, to shoot a turkey? No, I did not. Do you cook any part of the meal, or do you just? around and wait for it to be served. Uh, I have the capability of, uh, of, uh, of helping if needed, uh, but my, my services aren't usually required or requested or wanted. You're banished. <laughs> yes. Do you have any uh, Thanksgiving traditions that you and your family follow over here? Um, well, the family, in some respects, uh, my daughter's uh, moved to Providence. Uh, she's married now, uh, one of them. Uh, and uh, my other daughter uh, has been going to other areas. So uh, we, our, our traditions have been uh, simplified, uh, let's say. Uh, so it's, uh, it's going to be a very, uh, very uh, small, uh, small gathering in our, in our home. Stuart's always hungry if you need kids. <laughs> Stuart's, Stuart, I, I thought Stuart was going to Massachusetts. <laughs> when I get back. <laughs> uh, one, one more. Young guy. <laughs> one more, uh, a quick question. Um, what do you think about the, uh, the report that Seven Days came out with today uh, about a super PAC that supported you during the campaign as being the biggest um, spender during the election? Um, I didn't see the article, uh, but uh, but I guess that doesn't surprise me. Um, it's not anywhere near what it was two years ago, uh, but uh, but obviously uh, it helped in in our success. Could you one without it? Uh, we certainly could. Yes. But, but we have it. Eight hundred sixty-four thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Buys a lot of spots. Right. We will never know. <laughs> All right. Thank you very much. Have a happy Thanksgiving. Thank you, Thank you very much. much.